Hi, Stephen Van Tassel here, Wildlife Control Consultant. Uh, wanted to do an update on building bait sticks for your traps out of PVC pipe. So I had a little encounter yesterday and I wanted to be sure to pass this information along to you. So as you know, a bait stick allows you to hang the bait from the cage. So basically, it's just a PVC pipe. I think this is half inch PVC pipe. Fits into most traps. Sometimes you may have to cut a little notch in the top, but you, the T, the T, T ends are really the best, but you can, you can do them with just an end cap like this. Uh, so I was able to pick up some of this PVC pipe at a uh, garage sale, uh, really, really cheap, which was because this stuff can get a little pricey after a while. So I wanted to just talk about some safety issues that I encountered when I was doing some work the other day. So I'm revising my original uh, video to account for some of the safety stuff. So to make sure you don't have a bad incident like I almost had, uh, kind of got away from it, got, sometimes you get lucky. So we wanna talk about some safety issues. So first thing uh, I wanna talk about, and that is you want to get a PVC cutting tool. All right, there it is. You want a PVC cutting tool. So that's what you wanna have. And it looks like this. Okay, it's kind of neat, you open it up, and basically allows you to just simply cut it like you're cutting a piece of shears, and it has a little ratcheting mechanism. So let me make sure I get my, my length here properly. How long should you cut them? Well, you know, you wanna cut them, I like to have about two thirds of the height of the trap, but five inches should be enough. Like if you have a seven by seven by, 28 trap, a five inch PVC pipe should be long enough to even take care of your raccoon traps, which are gonna be 10 by 12 by 32. So, you know, five inches is, is enough. And so that would be the right, the right length. And, you know, you wanna make sure you have your goggles with you, right? So I should have been wearing them when I was cutting through originally, but I haven't seen any issues of stuff flying off, but the manufacturer does say you should wear your goggles, but I've, I've got them all steamed up here at the moment. Uh, one more thing we want to talk about, and that is do not use a circular saw. Why? Because what happens is, is that it frays the ends, unless you have a really fast saw, maybe with a narrow blade, the one I, the blade I used was probably too big. And what it does is it fragments it up at the top. It will cut it. Don't, don't get me wrong. It will cut it, but it's, a, it starts to fragment. And so when you're working on doing your drilling, and I, you know, you might see the cut in my hand here. So when I was holding them down, because I was holding the post down here, the poles, when I was putting in the drill, trying to drill the holes, uh, there was a little bit of a, I got a little cut at the top a little bit, but also more importantly is that I actually went through with the drill in my hand caught a little bit of the drill bit because it slipped off. Not good, right? So again, don't do as I do, do as I say, because you don't want to make some of the mistakes that I made and that's why I'm revising this, this video. So I'm not perfect. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be very happy to hear that. Uh, I'm not perfect, let me admit it here. So I have a little vise. I've put four of them together and you want to cinch it up. You gotta be careful about going too tight because you will crack it, you will crack them. And I've thought about using this uh, screwdriver at the end because when you're pushing the drill bit through, they begin to bend a little bit at the top. And so you need to kind of have a way to hold some pressure so you can push through. You wanna have a sharp drill bit. Uh, I'm using a quarter inch drill bit here. You can certainly go smaller uh, if, if you would like, maybe, you know, go down maybe to uh, maybe an inch or, uh, I mean, an eighth perhaps might be one way to go. Uh, you don't want to go too small because you want to have the bait that gets on the inside of your bait stick to get out, right? And that's one reason why we have the T cap at the top. We're trying to find a way to get that odor from your paste bait out into that cage area 
off the ground so that the animal will be going into it. Watch my video on baiting cage traps. It's only $19.95, then over an hour worth of training. You might be surprised what you might learn from that. So a little plug for my, for my video. So what I have here is four pipes together. I'm gonna to put on my safety goggles and watch how I'm drilling through. So you wanna drill through one end, one side, and then do the perpendicular on the other side. So here we go. Pull the, before you go through the fourth one, you're gonna to have to pull it up a little bit so you don't, otherwise your blade's gonna hit your, your uh, screwdriver, which I don't want to have happen. But if you saw that bend out, that's, that's what you're trying to, that's what you're trying to avoid. See, that's, see that's where my blade went through? You don't, you don't want that. You don't want the drill bit, because if you have your hand behind here, that would have punctured my hand. Don't want that at all. Some of you may be able to use some, some brackets at the top here to hold things together. So once you get away from the top, you should be okay. But, you know, be careful, kids. Don't be doing this. This should be something only an adult should be handling. The other side here. Okay, now we're going to do the perpendicular shots. These are a little bit safer because your hand's not directly behind it. Certainly don't want to get too close. Certainly, it's not perfect. You can use a knife. There's still some sharp edges on the edge here. Again, you wanna be careful when you're holding it here at the top. You, may, you can always use vice grips, perhaps. Something to keep your hands away. I was pretty careful, because uh, the blade I have is pretty sharp. I have some pretty good hand dexterity. But I also, this isn't a very fast drill. So when I, so when I let go of it, that blade's not moving anymore. Be careful. And then you can simply put your cap on and there you go with your, with your bait stick. Five inches, when it gets chewed up, chewed up here at the bottom, pull it off, flip it over, and you're kind of good to go. How do you clean them? Just drop them into some, some bleach you're always going to be wearing gloves when they're starting to get nasty because you want to be uh, be careful. Animals have had their teeth and mouth all over this. You don't want to be getting involved in that because look at all the look at the cuts I have in my hand. Here we have a cut down here. That's what happened the other day when I was scraping across. That's why you want to use this. But you'll find that you just need a few holes like this. So when you have your bait, your paste bait. You can just dip it in, pull it out, and that can be aerosolized, aerosolized out.
So it's really a handy tool, makes you look far more professional and to get makes maximum use of your bait. And you can even do other things. I'm sure if you think about it, you can even use this bait stick with liquid baits. And I'll let you think about how you would do that. But uh, I hope this was helpful to you, a little bit more safety concern. Again, don't forget I used a little screwdriver to, when I was holding things together. Those of you who have some drill presses, that's safer even still. I don't have a drill press. I'm kind of bush league here. But uh, be careful when you're making these. And you can take a knife. Sometimes the, when the, the cuts you make through here are kind of have some sharp edges to them, you can just take a knife. And just kind of use, the, use an edge just straight on. You're not trying to shave it this way. And you can kind of scrape some of those down a little bit. And that can help make it a little bit smoother. If you have a band, uh, you know, a uh, some sandpaper, you know, you can kind of smooth that out a little bit. Just take some of the sharp sharp edges off, and that'll be really helpful. Again, be careful of the knife too. I'm Stephen Van Tassel, wildlife control consultant, showing you a safer way of doing your your bait sticks. PVC bait sticks. Hope you find it helpful. Do subscribe to the channel. Do check out my website, wildlifecontrolconsultant.com. Subscribe to my blog and love to get some feedback from you. Perhaps you have some ideas about some other ways to bait your traps. Thanks for watching.